Hello, in this video, we are going to discuss the two most important authentication protocols available in the SMB world, NTLM and Kerberos. We will discuss in general how each works and what are the pros and cons of each protocol. We will also demo the protocols and actually show the flow between a client and its application server. Spoiler alert, Microsoft will be killing NTLM due to its vulnerability. NTLM is a Microsoft authentication product, which stands for New Technology LAN Manager. It is a single sign-on mechanism that relies on challenge response flow to confirm the requesting user. The flow goes as follows. The client passes the plain text username to the server. The server responds with a challenge by sending back a random number. The client then creates a hashed of the password and encrypts the server's random number with that password hash. The server then sends the same challenge response and username to the domain controller. The domain controller retrieves the password from its database, creates an identical password hash, and uses it to encrypt the challenge. The information is then returned to the server, which compares the encrypted challenge from the client against the encrypted challenge from the domain controller. If they match, then the user is authenticated. NTLM has a number of vulnerabilities. They include the fact that the encryption algorithms used by NTLM are old. Passing password hash values across the internet is a major security problem. And there is no server authentication, which allows, therefore, for relay attacks. Here we see Wireshark output from the side of the client where we are authenticating ourselves via the NTLM protocol to a server. We initialize the connection by sending out this negotiate packet. We receive a response from the server with the challenge. That challenge includes the special a uh, random number that we will have to encrypt using our password hashed value. So that is done over here where we respond back to the server. We send out the username and the domain name and the encrypted version of what we received from the server. The server then compares that information with what it calculates by speaking to the domain controller and responds here back to the user, telling us that indeed we were authenticated successfully. Kerberos is a more sophisticated authentication protocol developed originally by MIT in the United States. It assumes the existence of a ticketing service or key distribution center referred to frequently as KDC. The Kerberos flow is as follows. The client packages various information about itself, username, the date, the time, etc., and encrypts everything other than the username using the user's password. This information is sent to the KDC. The KDC then checks the user's name via the Active Directory database for the user's password and then attempts to decrypt what was sent from the client. If it succeeds, the client is verified. Once verified, the KDC creates a session key and a TGT or a ticket granting ticket, which is encrypted and sent to the client. The client saves this key as it will be used to access the desired server. The client sends the ticket to the server it wants to talk to, which then decrypts the ticket using its own password. If successful, the ticket is valid and the client's permissions can then be inspected to determine what access rights it has on that server. A big advantage that Kerberos has over NTLM is that no password or password hash is stored either locally or sent over the internet. In addition, multi-factor authentication is supported as well as stronger cryptography. So here we see Wireshark packet flow from the side of the client. We're trying to connect from ourselves here, which is at um, 167, to our server. And we're going to use Kerberos for authentication. So at this point, we want to send a request to the 
Kerberos KDC. Note here we're having we're seeing three identical requests. These are more technical and are not overly related to Kerberos. For example, here we're trying to use, as you can see here, UDP, and that's being rejected as the response is too large. So this time we switch around and we're using TCP protocol instead. But at any rate, this is the initial request where we, we send our information of our basic, our basic user information to the KDC, which is at 78. And he will respond to us with our reply, giving us our uh, TGT. And at this point, we will now send a request for a particular ticket for a, a server. And that server will be the one that we're connecting to over here. And at this point, we get the response to that. And the information that we got back, the uh, ticket information is used at the uh, server that we want to talk to, to tell the server that we have authenticated correctly. One of the problems with Kerberos is that the client has to be able to communicate with the Kerberos KDC. But what if it cannot? This has been a problem with using Kerberos for authentication. Microsoft acknowledged the need for a solution and is a must-have to encourage migration from NTLM and as such, introduced two extensions to solve this problem. The first solution, IA Curb, which stands for Initial and Pass-Through Authentication for Kerberos, addresses the scenarios where clients have visibility of the application server, but not the KDC. IA Curb allows the target server to function as a proxy, securely relaying Kerberos messages between the client and the KDC. IA Curb also acts as a prerequisite for Microsoft's other innovative feature, Local KDC. Local KDC obviates the necessity for an external KDC by embedding a simplified KDC directly into every Windows machine. This simplifies authentication, enabling clients to authenticate directly with target devices, even in workgroup scenarios and peer-to-peer -peer contexts. We have presented a brief overview of NTLM and Kerberos. We hope that as a takeaway, you realize the advantages of using Kerberos over NTLM. With the addition of the two new Kerberos extensions, Kerberos should be a fit for any application environment. Thank you for watching this video. You can find more information at our website, visualityandq.com. Visuality Systems, the SMB protocol experts.